the first thing that we're going to need to do to make our um, sand dollar coasters is to create the front of our coaster. So to do that, we're just going to take our four strips of fabric and the sizes are in the pattern and just sew them together along the long sides. I like to press the um, seam allowances all in one direction and because this is kind of an ombre look going from lighter to dark I've pressed them towards the dark but it doesn't really matter you could press them open however you like. Then because we're going for kind of an ocean feel with these you're going to create your quilt sandwich with your top your batting and your backing. Because these are such small pieces you don't really need to base them together unless you would like to. Um, when I'm working on little projects like this, if I do decide to base them, I just go ahead typically and use a regular school glue stick, one that is washable, um, and just use a really tiny amount just right on the edges and it holds it really well so that you can get those all sewn together. So, I like to use kind of a loose wavy quilting texture to these um, again because we're adding in the sand dollars here. If you decided to add a different applique on top of your coaster, um, for sure quilt it any way you like even with the sand dollars. Obviously that's your project, quilt it how you want. So we're going to add some quilting lines. Now here's the caveat, you can quilt before you add the applique or after you add the applique. I find on such a small project, it's easier to do it beforehand, but you do run the risk, especially when you're using um, fabric for the applique instead of felt for the applique, that some of that quilting might show up underneath it. Um, and if you don't want that, then I would go ahead and wait and quilt it um, after you've added the applique to it. Um, this one, I, I'm trying to remember, I did quilt, you can see I quilted around it um, once I added the applique. So it gives it kind of a really fun puffy texture to it um, to not have that quilted underneath it, especially when you add the quilting. Um, you can see I did that after I had added the applique to this. Um, so it gives it really a lot of fun texture to that. So we're not, we're jumping a little bit ahead of ourselves, but um, especially on these where I'm using the felt, I went ahead and quilted it ahead of time. Um, you can see the quilting doesn't show up on this one. I'll show you on the back. You can see the quilting goes right through that applique. So just depending on the look you're going for, you can decide to quilt it now or add the applique and quilt it later. And speaking of that, um, if you want to not have this quite so puffy, if you're kind of concerned about how your drinks are going to sit on these coasters, you can add the applique at this stage before you've created your quilt sandwich. Um, add your applique, sew it on, and then do your quilting. Um, and then you won't see these quilting lines, you know, the applique lines sewn through all three layers. So that's another option for a different look. And again, it's totally up to you. Now the difference, let me show you in the texture on here is if you don't add the, or if you've already sewn down the applique before you do the quilting, this whole surface is going to be kind of smooth across. So you can see here where there's this nice texture and it kind of goes down a little bit. That's because I've sewn through all three layers, including the batting. If I had sewn this down before I added it onto here, this is all going to be kind of one layer across. So that's just another little detail to keep in mind and a different way to kind of customize your coaster how you like. Okay, if we're doing our quilting, you're going to do that now. Um, either way, now we're ready to add our applique. So this is where you're going to decide if you want to do felt applique or fabric applique. Now, a couple of tips if you are going to do the fabric applique. And that is because this is such a light um, color with our sand dollar on here, you're going to want to, um, well, you may want to add a little bit of interfacing behind your fabric before you add your adhesive, um, your fusible adhesive, especially on something like this where I have such dark layers. And if you look really closely, you can still see some of the shadowing of these lines underneath here, but it's not 
very noticeable because I did add interfacing behind the applique on that one. So what you'll do is just take some fusible applique. In this case, I've used a lightweight applique. You could go up to a medium weight applique or medium weight um, fusible interfacing and just fuse it to the wrong side of the fabric that you're using and then add your um, fusible adhesive on top of that. Now this is um, created so that you can print four of your appliques together to make a set of four coasters. Um, and you can print them onto the printable sheets of the fusible applique uh, or the fusible adhesive. I like to use ThermoWeb's um, fusible adhesive, but whatever adhesive you're using, make sure that it's one you can sew through. So you double want, you really wanna check that because if you use a non-sewable one, which again, if you want to customize this out, however you want, who am I to tell you what you can't do? But if you are using a non-sewable fusible adhesive, do not try to sew through it. It will mess up your needle and maybe even your sewing machine. So if you do want to add the detail of the stitching through it, make sure that you are using a fusible adhesive you can sew through. So once you have your um, applique fused on here, and I have a whole video all about raw edge applique with lots of different tips and tricks. So if you're really new to applique and you want to know more about it, um, I will link to that in the description of this video. But um, really big overview, make sure that you leave a little um, margin around your pattern pieces before you fuse it onto here because um, once you go to cut it out, it's much easier to cut right on the line instead of trying to cut right next to the line. And it will make your life much simpler if you don't have to worry about um, trying to get up right next to that line. So give yourself a margin, fuse it down, and then you're going to cut it out with a pair of scissors. And the same thing is true if you are doing felt or if you're doing fabric. Um, this is the felt version, and I went ahead and used the fusible adhesive on this one as well. Now, if you want to have a little more loft to your um, to your felt here, you may not want to use fusible applique so that you don't have to put so much heat um, and squish it down. So there is another version of this in the pattern that shows how to turn it into a little mini quilt that's six and a half inches instead of this four and a half inch finished coaster. So if you were gonna do the mini quilt version and say you wanted to have a little more loft to your felt and you weren't worried about it sticking, um, then you could just use freezer paper um, to cut out your shapes. Uh, I wanted this to get squished a little bit more because I wanted to make sure it was a little bit more dense surface. That way when I go to set a drink on there, I don't have to worry about it being really wobbly um, because of the height of the felt. So that's just another thing to think about. Okay, once you've cut around the edge of your pattern, if you're going to do this version here where I've gone ahead and cut out the little accents on my sand dollar, you're going to want to do it now before you peel your backing away. And there's a couple of tips for doing this, and I'm going to apologize in advance because these are teeny tiny little details. <laughs> and it's just because of the size of the project and that kind of thing, that's how it worked out. But um, it is it is small and it's kind of a pain. So if you don't want to cut these out, I'll tell you a couple other options here in just a second. Okay, now we're getting ready to add our details to our applique or to address these here. If you are going to cut them out so that you can kind of see this background fabric through it, I recommend a really sharp pointy pair of scissors. And then you're just going to stab through the middle of that little section and then just take your time and slowly clip around it um, until you have the whole section cut out. And like I said, it's a, it's a little bit time consuming. Um, it's going to take you a minute to get that done. Just take your time. And then on the felt, what I've noticed is because you're cutting at an angle from underneath, you may want to come back and kind of just trim around those edge fibers at the top just so that you have a little bit cleaner opening here on your um, on your sand dollar. So that's that option if you are going to go that way. And again, you could do this on the fabric version as well. 
um, and just have these openings instead of trying to add applique pieces on top. So that's the first option that you have. The second option is to um, cut out the accent pieces out of the um, accent fabric that you're using for it. Um, and again, apologize for the teeny tiny bits that they are, but once you cut them out, instead of trying to fuse them down and then sew with them, um, what I recommend doing is taking some fabric adhesive, some fabric glue, and you'll peel away the paper backing from your little piece and then you're going to add just a little bit of glue to the back side of this and then glue it down on your piece. You want to try to catch the edges of your little accent pieces, but you don't want a lot of glue running around it um, that's going to show up. Now, this glue does dry clear. It dries flexible and it is washable. So um, you can still wash your coasters if they get spilled on or something and you don't have to worry about um, the glue washing out. So that is my favorite way of doing this. If you are going to add the accents is to cut them out, remove the paper and then glue them down instead of trying to sew around them. And then the last option that you have for that is to simply not add the accent pieces. So I'm just gonna lay these down here and show you. Um, it's, a, it's a much simpler silhouette, but it's still really pretty. And once you've sewn these down and added that little bit of detail, um, you know, you don't miss this as much as you might think you would. So those are three ways of addressing these teeny tiny little accent pieces um, and however you wanna do your applique. So if you've cut them out, you're going to do that here. If not, that's the last thing that you'll do. In the middle of that, you're going to take your quilted or not quilted background piece and we're gonna start adding our applique. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to peel off my paper backing I'm going to center it as well as I can. And then I'm gonna take this to my iron and fuse it into place. Once that's fused into place, I'm gonna take the next layer, which is this flower shape here. And again, I'm going to peel off the paper backing and you can see how this is shiny. That's the glue. So you wanna make sure that the whole, um, back is covered with that glue that it transferred onto the fabric from your um, applique or from your paper. You're gonna position that where you want it and then again, take it to your iron and fuse it into place. Make sure that you have followed your manufacturer's instructions for um, the heat and time that you need to fuse these into place to make sure that you get the best results for your project. And then the last layer is this one. And I'm just going to put it right on top and try to center it and then take it and fuse it. Then we're going to take it to our sewing machine and sew around just the flower and the center part, just like on this one. And then you're ready to go ahead and add your accent pieces if you want, um, if you haven't done that yet. If you haven't quilted it yet, then this is where you would put your three layers together and quilt it. And then the final step, as always, of any little quilting project is to add a binding to it to finish it off. So this is such a fun project. You can make one, you can make a set of four, you can do kind of an ombre version like I've been doing here, or you can do all one piece of fabric on the front. You can do whatever you want since it's your project. I hope you have enjoyed this project in my summer sewing series. Again, you can sign up for the templates and patterns for free um, in my email. There is a link in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day and a summer full of creativity. We'll see you next week.